Good day and welcome to the Tag and Brando podcast. We welcome all those people out in virtual land as well as other folk, animals, pandas, whoever you might be. We appreciate and, and specifically pandas though, out of that. Specifically pandas, um, but all okay, other good. creatures, plants, and fungi, you're welcome, and thank you for being here. My name's Taggart. This is my friend here. This is Brandon. Hey. Hey. Um, and uh, thanks thanks f- for joining us. We do this podcast. We talk to each other. It's just conversations. We're just like, what's up? And he's like, hey. And I'm like, what? And then we're like, yo. Uh, so if you like that Dude, kind of I thing, totally thought yo after that. Of course you did, say, because we have done this a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, like, thanks for being here. Yeah. Shooting from the hip. Here we go. Brandon's going to start us out with our first segment. Yeah. This is what we call question of the day. Yes. And we invite you to kind of, you know, if you're in a work environment, mm-hmm. you got some people... Or maybe just even like, you know, group of friends, a sewing circle, uh, you know, virtual poker game or something like that. Just, you know, get some conversation going. And this one I think is it's a good one. This is a this is a thinker and I I, I, w- I would challenge anybody to kinda put this uh, put this out there in the world because this might this might become a thing. This this might gain some momentum and, and end up changing <laughs> how how our how our economic whole section of life yes works. Yes. So, Taggart, when you're thinking about you know your your job and your earnings and your wages, your income, your salary, all that kind of good stuff. Yes. Um, if you're if you're like a typical person not even american if you're like a typical person mm-hmm. it, it comes to you periodically correct the money you make yes yes the so my uh my question to you today is what if that entire year's salary that entire year's worth of earnings mm-hmm. direct deposited into your bank account mm. January 1st. Yeah, yeah. Each each year. Lovely. That's the whole year. Right. And we're not we're not going to worry about too much of like you know whether you got to pay it back if you lose your job or if <laughs> you know you work overtime or whatever whatever. For our argument's sake, we'll just say your company paid you or your job paid you for last year's earnings all right. January 1st. So it's all right. money that you've accrued. Already. It's your money. Bam. Hits you. And you got to wait till next January for the next lump sum. How do you budget that? Or can, do you think you can budget that? Um, I like this question very much, Alex. Um <laughs> Sorry. He doesn't. He doesn't ask questions though. And R.I.P. That's very true. Alex Trebek. Oh, that was too soon. Yeah. Um, too soon. Much too soon. Sorry. But uh, yeah. So okay. First off, backpedaling a little bit. I like this question very much. Um, there have been times in my life when I have received my monthly earnings at the beginning of the month for the whole month, and I will mm-hmm. say that I enjoy that very much. Um, oh really? Okay. Yeah, actually, um, it was well. It's just nice because you have all the money and you can say, "Okay, I'm going to sit down at one point. I'm going to pay all my bills mm-hmm. for the month, and then I'm going to be done." So, first things first. If you had all your money up front. At the beginning of the year, I would take a day and I would pay (laughs) my bills for the year. That's fair. Yeah. Right? If I know 
If I know, what, go ahead. What are we looking at for bills? Like that you can pay all at, uh, all at once. Well, I mean, you can pay any bill all at once. They'll take your money. Um, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. But like, if I got a car payment and I know, okay, it's the same thing every month. Easy peasy. Times 12. Bank deposit, check, whatever it is. Zoop, zoop. Then they have their payment. And also... Uh, my car is paid off way more. Uh, well, I mean, it's still once a year. Yes, yes, yes. But it's more satisfying because you get to pay the whole thing off a big lump sum at once. So right? that that's kind of interesting. I I am thinking that some things like that, they might not take a lump sum and then just give you a pass for the next 12 months. They might make you still divvy it out in monthly chunks. Uh, I I maybe. I just remember like when I was when I was talking to my uh, my car loan peoples, um, it's their mm-hmm. official title. Um, they I was like, well, what if I want to pay this off or go early or whatever? And they're like, well, you're still gonna get a monthly bill. Until your car's paid off, it'll just be earlier if you've made balloon payments. So they still expect the right. X monthly payment. Um, and let, even if you like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to pay five payments all at once. Bam, bam, bam. And they'll be like, oh, that means your five months is shaved off the end, but you're still paying us next month kind of a thing. Right, right, right. Okay, so that's sure. fair. There are going to be those. So what? What I would do is I would say I would create a secondary that's a good like, plan. payment account. That's that's what I was okay. thinking. In my bank, send that money over, and then go in and actually schedule mm-hmm. my monthly payments mm-hmm. through the year. Right. So it's still, I've technically paid it all at once, but they'll divvy out for every month. Yada yada. And then I don't touch it once the money goes in there. I don't touch it because I've done all the math and the things should right. go out when they go out, right? Um, to cover those bills throughout the year. And so then it's still a one sit down mm-hmm. and do, uh, for at least for the things that have a regular payment. Uh, for things that are irregular, <laughs> I would, you, can, you know, if I could figure it online? out. I w- Is that electronic regular? <laughs> what? You said irregular. Say again? Yeah. I mean it's a it's a it's a long time, oh, okay. right? The irregular. Irregular. Okay, irregular. irregular. <laughs> you know, it was a lot of emphasis on that syllable. Um So so this is a little tougher, but I would man, I would try I would I would try to shoot high to cover any okay. irregularities. So, right? So try to actually pay more than I owe for things that might fluctuate like, from money. Give me a for instance. Uh, well, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm trying to think. I know I've had. Okay, yeah. so. Okay. Utilities, okay, got it. Right? Every month your mm-hmm. utility is going to be different. Um I can take last year's utilities and look at every month and, and make a educated guess on where right. I might be, right, for every month, uh, depending on what I did last year. Um, and I would shoot a little high um, and pay those out. And, and, and maybe not schedule the payments, but at least lump that sum into mm-hmm. my payment account and then you know, when the bill came every month, then I could divvy that out um, and know that I'm above bar okay. with that. I might actually end up with money in that account at the end of the year for, mm-hmm. say, utilities, right? So that's so that's that's that. So for bills and things, that's what I would do. Um, so, yeah, in my thing, I would make lots of different separate accounts. Basically, um, which you which is way easier to do nowadays, and most of it most is of it free like you can get like three hundred bucks would, 
sometimes by opening an additional account. But they want that yeah, direct deposit, sure. so... So... Yeah. That's yeah, going to be true. hard. True. Right. But, uh, but you know, you could get a checking account or uh, whatever account and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I would try to divvy things out into these different things. Um, so... Say for like groceries or gas, I might have an, a separate account again going through last year and budgeting off of what we paid for mm-hmm. for both. Put it into like a an account where we both have a card and we can pay gas or or, or, or food off of that account and try to budget that in to that section. Um, you know, anything that is... You know, emergency account, put all that money into emergency fund for things that you aren't planning on. But the nice thing about planning a year in advance, you you can really think about those weird maintenance things too, like you, your oil changes and all that stuff. You can oh, yeah. for all that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And, and set all that money aside. So that might all go in the gas and money. Mm-hmm. Uh well, kind of, th- yeah, that's a little bit more stable of, a, of an amount than, like, gas or food necessarily, so that might have to be somewhere else. But, like, I think you could totally do this and do it well to the point where, you know, you, you, know, you could uh, potentially actually save more money getting all of it up front versus getting it monthly or bi-weekly. Or right, because, I mean, the, the ultimate question um, that follows all of this is how is how is holiday spending this time of year having, having a budget right? that's been sitting around for 11 months kind of a thing? Like, are people having a pretty meager Christmas <laughs> when, you know, waiting for, waiting for January 1st to roll around again, you know? Well, that's fair. Um, you know, I guess you, you roll that into your credit card bill for next year if you if right. you haven't planned for it. But if you planned for it at the beginning of January... You're just looking for deals um, the whole time. You know, you're and just made, waiting, for, waiting for this to go on sale and you're just like, sweet, I'm just going to buy this. This goes in the present closet. No one's allowed in the present closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well completely mm-hmm. like if you if you plan like okay we're i'm gonna have this much money at the end of the year because because uh, again the the plan is to budget it out and actually save money from your salary year after year so you mm-hmm. want to have excess right. anyways um and so you could dip into that i suppose if you really had to but if you planned well i think you could still get all of the Christmas shopping and stuff Mm -hmm. into that budget um, and plan for it from the beginning, which again, um, take some foresight and looking at last year and how much you spent and all of that stuff. Uh, You know, the beginning of the year budget would take, would take some (laughs) some time, but I, I think that, you know, you could, uh, I don't know. Like I said, I think you could probably come out with more money saved uh, if you took the time and did it right, then potentially getting paid more frequently. Mm-hmm. Um, so, because you're in you're in the mode also of like we can't spend it. Like if we don't have it, we like literally can't spend it. I'm not gonna get a right. check in two weeks. That's gonna make it feel like I have more money than I actually have, which is. I don't know for you, but that's usually what it feels like to me when I get my money. I'm like, oh, I got two hundred bucks. Actually, I have to pay that somewhere else. I mm-hmm. definitely know I do, but like I got two hundred bucks, so I go buy two hundred dollar dinner. You know, um, <laughs> I'm, well, not, not just one dinner, maybe right. many. But uh, it will put you more in that mindset of like we can't, you know, you can't. Like if we if we overspend, like uh, you know, it's gonna cut into our budget for right. the next year because. Any any debt we're taking on has to apply later on. I don't know. 
I, I just think it would put you in a clearer mindset as finances go by having to look at the overall picture versus the the little puzzle pieces you get along the way as you get your money. Hundred percent. Like I think, I think you're right. I think it's it's definitely uh, a question on like, okay, where are my priorities? My priorities are roof over my head. You know, ability to right. still you know transport myself and food. So those those but those bank accounts, <laughs> if you will, are on lockdown. Right. Once you put the money in there, it's it's a, right. you know, no deposit, right. no return kind of like, even though that is the exact opposite of what I'm trying to say. Um, you, 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 you put that on, <laughs> you set the automatics and and you just, you know, kind of forget about it. You pay six months of your car insurance off all at once, right. save that seven dollars or some crap, <laughs> you know, that they that they offer. It's, <laughs> right. it's exactly. really not that good of an incentive to pay it all at once you know i don't know it's it's no, just kind of dumb but um unless yeah unless you definitely want to say money is gone like i don't have to worry about this kind of a thing but right mm-hmm. pay it down. um yeah the the thing that um and kind of harking back to my uh my former job the thing that this hopefully would do for some people is it would give them the ability to not have to buy things on credit, right? And if like if you yeah. if you want a couch, yeah. right, a new couch, and you're just like, oh, I don't have the thousand dollars or the you know fifteen hundred dollars, depending on what kind of couch you're looking at, kind of money, right? Like I'll buy it. I'll put two hundred dollars down, and then I'll pay two hundred dollars next month, and two hundred dollars next month. Da, 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 da. Well, you know, you've spent you know eighteen hundred dollars for that fifteen hundred dollar couch, and you spent right. you know more money, like you know all that kind of different stuff. So, like, it would definitely be like I have the bulk of my money, so I can make some of these bigger purchases right now. Bingo, bingo. Um, no, not have to pay. Right, because mm-hmm. you can see at the beginning where that you know that this money is not allocated. Mm-hmm. It's unallocated. I can I can do with it what I will. If I want to save it, great. If I need that couch, though, you know it it gives you a much more flexible uh, 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 emergency right. fund, really, where you're just like, well, we need this, and I don't have to pay that mm-hmm. interest on it. Here you go. Right. Thank you. And right. I mean, that was the kind of the, the thing about our company um, is it was <clears throat> you you are given the convenience of monthly payments so you can get it today, but you will pay more over time. Right. And the sooner you pay it off, the cheaper it's going to be. Right. That whole, you know, the whole financial gambit in and of itself. Right. But... Um, the thing about it is um, just the way it worked is if, if you paid it off over a year, you will usually pay about twice as much. So that means that if you saved that same amount of payments for six months, you would then be able to just buy it outright. But right. you know, maybe it's a right. broken washer or broken fridge or something that you need right now. Kind of a thing, but if you're right. if you're planning ahead, if you're making those kinds of things, um, yeah, hopefully a lot of times you are doing that, like saving up and then paying it all um, at once, rather than the back end. Buy, it, get it today, and pay it off in the future, and everything like that. So I think that would help a lot of people do that, where it's like I got. You know, I went right. all year working for this company for basically nothing, and now I got it all on January first, and I got to keep on working with this company and everything, right? But I, and I and I got to right. live off of that. Um, but yeah, I think. Um, well, I just think how many people you know get their first paycheck in January and then mm-hmm. do the math to see what what they're realistically going to spend over the 
period of mm-hmm. the whole year to see what kind of savings they would have. Yeah, the exactly. I don't think mm-hmm. most people do that. I don't think most people do that. But this would give you the ability and, you know, the uh, the the reason to look at it that way, which is, I think, mm-hmm. a very healthy so, way to look at it. Uh, to see what, what am I going to actually have in the bank at the end of the year? Because most people... You know, <laughs> want right. to be in the black. <laughs> they want to have extra money mm-hmm. that they can do with what they need right. and what they. And want, I think so. um, the other thing. Well, let's let's broaden this question out just a little bit. A little, like a few measurements here. What? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we okay, said, okay, okay, okay. if this was your arrangement, if your um, boss gave you or your company or. Uh, your business, I should say, for you <laughs> specifically, if your if your business revenue all came yeah, yeah, yeah. all at once and everything like that, then there'd be a couple of things you've got to figure out for yourself. You know, I can't pay, I can only pay my car insurance at six month intervals. I can only pay my gas bill every you know month, and I can you know all that, like we talked about with the car payments and everything. So, right. if this was a nationwide type thing. If this this is just like, you know, Mm -hmm. the new regime, you know, blah, 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 and putting all the logistics aside of how it actually starts, how do you think the Uh world of commerce would change with everybody getting lump sums of money at, on January 1st? Oh, man. Um, Well, first off, businesses are going to have to have a lot of more capital before Mm -hmm. they start. You know, if... I mean... And 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 it's harder to start, I think. I mean, so think of an employee who lost their job, right? And they're like, Uh mid-year, I need a new job. So they they get I mean they get paid out so I mean if you get if you lose your mm-hmm. job in six months you've been working there six months and you lose your job they have to pay you out for that six months obviously right so you got six months pay so you actually have um, some money to think about your next move and you actually have more time as a as a as a employee to take and maybe find something that would be a good career move for you uh, financially and, mm-hmm. and just, you know, career path maybe, then someone who's just like, I just got fired. I have two weeks pay. I got to find something well, let, real quick, you know? Right. So there's... So, so there, no, I, I get what you're saying. Side. But let's let's say like... Because um, I think in that scenario, if you lost your job, I understand. It's like PTO. Like they... Legally, they should have to pay you out, right? Like, you know, you can't just hold that over your head. But, like, say it doesn't happen that way. It's like a W-2. They don't – they're not obligated to do it until they close their books on December 31st, even though people can pick one of their fiscal year ends and it boggles my mind. I have no idea why that is allowed to be a thing. But, like, so say, yeah, the thing is, like – you know, for, for this thought experiment, if, if you know, people started, okay, now you're getting paid every month. Okay, now you're getting paid every two months. Now you're getting paid every quarter. Now you're getting paid every six months. Now you're getting paid every year. So it kind of builds up to that. But, like, pretty much, like, everybody's, like, the, the world now is, okay. you know, if you lose your job at company A, then two weeks later, three weeks later, pick up at company B, January 1st, you'll get your paycheck from company A and your paycheck from company B together. Um, so you'd still have, uh, and that makes if sense you worked, too. if you worked a full I year mean, at company A, got your money and then got fired in March, you'd still have all of last year. You s- yeah. Still got that to take you. Yeah. Right. That's fair. That's mm-hmm. fair. So it's still the same. The same thing. Mm -hmm. So you still have a lot of time, whatever. Um, I think the hardest thing would be for companies Mm -hmm. starting out. Um, Well, no, you don't have to pay your employees for X number of months. (laughs) 
I mean, you're true. But if you're self, right. if you're self-employed, um, yeah, you have the money that you got paid last year, whatever, mm-hmm. when you had a different job, possibly. But you're still. Um, Everyone else is working off last year, but I just started a business this year. So I don't have any uh, finances mm-hmm. from last year to carry my business on to this year because mm-hmm. I'm just starting now. So, at, yes, maybe as an individual, I got a year's worth of payments to pay to, to last me through. But as a business, um, if we're – if I, right. So I don't know. Okay, because I guess as a business might act differently. People are paying you throughout the year, so it's not that big. Yeah, a as deal. a business, your your um, expenses. Yeah, y- mm-hmm. you gain that capital so, throughout. That's fair. So how okay, about like I'm thinking of it wrong? Like do you but, like uh, I would see something like car dealerships being like mm. beginning of the year blowout. You know. Because they know that people just got a heap of money. Oh, yeah. You got your like, money. Like, come buy things. Yeah. All the big sales yeah, like, would be at the and beginning if, if of the year. And if we take this one step further and say that credit isn't really a thing, you know, like you said, you know, you're not putting it on, like, you're not putting it on your credit card for uh, in December to pay it off in, right. in January. Like, yeah, like, all of these big purchases, you know, like, you know, you got your cars, you got your computers, you got your um, TV. Like Black Friday is now January two. <laughs> you know, like that is the day that you buy. Right. That that places are gonna say like spend your money. Like I mean, it's gonna be tax return season like crazy. Well, right. Well, even if even if. Uh... Credit is still a thing. I would think that they would be like, the better yes. deal is with cash, mm-hmm. right? Always. Like, at the beginning of the year, they're like, here's the big cash sales, like, hundreds right. of dollars off right. if you take credit, even before mm-hmm. interest is added on. Like, like uh, I see that would be a big deal. Um, but, yeah, yeah, everything, the where right now the big money spenders are at the end of the year, and like uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. like you said, tax season yeah. in, in April, when people get a big lump of money, potentially, um, it would yeah. be at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I think it would be fair. interesting because, like, like we said, you know, would Christmas still be, you know, the biggest gift giving season? It's like I don't know, man. We all might move to like, you know, a Chinese New Year style, <laughs> like where. All, all the big, all the big, you know, you know, Easter might be the big, you know, gift giving holiday or Valentine's Day, you know, right. or something like that, because because that's when you're you're going to have all that extra money that's just burning a hole in your pocket. And then, you know, come December, you're like, Ooh, like, I don't know, like, we're going to have to you know, kind of scrape by and stuff like that, because um, I think, like you said, you know. Putting putting your money on lockdown like is is hard sometimes. Like when you're, it it, it is, especially mm-hmm. when things pop up and you're like, "Ooh, we did not expect this," and "Ooh, I got this money right sitting there. We could pay it, but mm-hmm. then I don't have this I can pay for now." That's why, like, uh, I I try it so hard, and sometimes. like anytime. I'm like, I need to contribute as much money as I can to my 401k. And if there's like an employee stock purchase plan, um, that kind of stuff. Like even when I was, this is when I was like working at, you know, Sam's Club in my teens. I put money in the employee stock purchase plan. A, because they gave you a 15% discount. It's Walmart stock. It's pretty stable. Mm -hmm. And... Also, I can't touch it for, it was like a year after I bought each installment. So it's like, it's like, okay, okay, well, literally you, you have this money and you can pull it out, but you are going to get slapped with, with fees and fines and stuff like that. And so, 
you might as well just leave it in there. Whereas the money like on your debit card, you're like, oh, yeah, I can afford it. Let's do this. You know, right. That kind of thing. But that would make it interesting too. I mean, if you, you know, at the beginning of the year, you take your 6,000 mm-hmm. max Roth IRA contribution or whatever, you know, and throw it in at the beginning it's of the true. year. You're like, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like, that's my retirement. Slap that HOA. Like, or not HOA. HSA. Uh, <laughs> slap your HOA. Anybody who has an HOA, yeah. needs you just need right? to slap them. That's just an aside from another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Unless yeah. they're cleaning your streets mm-hmm. and that's nice. Um, no. Uh, so, anyways. Yeah. It would be very interesting and... Um, you know, I I think it would be pretty satisfying in some cases to be able to throw mm-hmm. that big amount at things, um, which would be very reasonable, really. At that, and point. you would really um, know what you've made in a year, because like sometimes you're like, what is you know, what's your salary? It's like, well, you know, like I get paid hourly, or like this, da, 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 da. like you know, I could worked a little bit of overtime, so maybe it's a little bit more than this, or you know, I like da 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 da. It's right. just like. No, like, boom, your salary no, I got the shows on your now. bank balance. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I I don't think I would Crazy. mind it very much. Like you said, if anything, it would just make me sit down and, like, think this all through. And I think you're right. I think most people, if... Right. If most people had this and they sat down and paid attention to their finances like maybe we all should, they would end up saving money anyway because they would be much right. more aware of what they're spending, where that money is going, and, you know, is this a good purchase, is this not, you know, should we, you know, pay for it this way or that way, they would they would be a lot more, like, right. conscious of it instead of just being like, yeah, well, I'll get paid next week and it'll be fine, kind of a thing. So, right. So yeah, right. So like I said, it might change. Might cool change man. The world, but probably not. <laughs> we're changing. That's right. We're changing the world with this conversation. Um. Yeah. So let's take a look back. What do you What do you got for our extra good memory? Well, this is kind of broad, but I, I want to talk cruise and not. T cruise, and not like not like you know, ocean cruise or <laughs> yeah, or oh. Terry cruise as Go it were. All right. Um, but like uh, you know, like uh, but 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 cruise of people, like okay. your people, you know, your your friend group uh, throughout the years. Would you say at times that you had a crew? Uh, I would definitely say I I've gone through. I've gone through a couple of crews, for sure. Um, yeah. We we had uh, we had the preschool bunch, or as uh, we would call ourselves, the Joy Schoolers, oh. Joy School friends. Um, yes. Joy School. I mean, yes. we'll ta- have to go into a whole other thing about that in a different podcast. But um, that was that was definitely a strong <laughs> one. Uh, I remember when. The crew kind of broke up a little bit. Um, one of our friends was uh, their family was moving to Germany, and I uh-huh. specifically remember on your swing set in your backyard, just having okay. like a good cry with your sister and this friend when we when we were talking about them leaving for for Germany. That was that was hard. But then they came back. Wow, dude! How old? How old were you before, then? Yeah, it was before Preschool kindergarten, age, so, so five maybe. Four? So yeah, five at the most. Right? Um, but yeah. then, see, and and I'll get to this. There's some more examples. But the thing about a good crew member is once once you get back, once you once you see each other again, you are right back into it, like. It never, right. like, it never happened. And that's exactly what happened. Came back in high school, and it was like, I mean, we were getting kicked out of classes together still, because <laughs> we were laughing so hard. 
you know that kind of <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, then right. in elementary school, um, I was friends with this. Uh, there were there were three of us uh, specifically. One was like the tallest kid in school. I don't I don't know if, if anybody can relate to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then me, nope. mid, very average, and then. Um, uh, one of the shorter kids in in class, and so it was like Big Mac, small fry, and I was medium Coke, like <laughs> and everything. Nice. Um, <laughs> and you know, yeah, we now you mean. we kind of hung around um, all throughout uh, elementary school. I'm gonna say this: we, you remember Challenger the middle school. Yes. Yes, sir. I got some dark memories of that place, man. The hallways were just Dude, middle school? dark uh, in general. <laughs> like yes, there was no natural mean. light in that place. Terrible like color choices and it was just like dark hallways, dark brick on the inside of the classrooms. And I just remember there were some kids yeah. that I hung around with and stuff like that, but I don't think I really had a solid crew in sixth grade, and that was a bummer, man. I, I'll say I don't think a lot of people have a solid crew in middle school. I had a, I had a buddy that I became friends with in sixth grade. And uh, I remember my my whole world kind of got <laughs> dashed in middle school, dude. Because <laughs> uh, well, well, you know, to speak of my experience, I had some some crew. I had a crew in in elementary school that basically lasted almost all the years of elementary school. It was about uh, four four or five of us. Um, and so the, I was like, well, this is how it works, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're just friends, and then, like, you go somewhere else, and you're still... So um, the way it worked is some of the that crew of mine from elementary school went to a different middle yeah. school, and some of them went to yeah. Challenger, right? And so, and then, but the way that uh, it's, it's middle school works, you get split into these different groups and like you, you I have these teachers and you have those teachers and none the twain mix except for band and like you're over there playing saxophone and I'm over here playing bassoon like right. we don't see each other so so that's dark and sucks but like I remember the, the I remember this dude uh, I met in 6th grade and we are like oh we're cool together and so we hung out and whatever and about Gosh, I don't remember how long. It wasn't terribly long, I don't think. A few months, mm-hmm. three months or something. He became friends with this other dude that was quote unquote cool. Mm-hmm. And then we were no lo- no longer friends. And I was like, is this what middle school is going to be? Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> if anybody can't relate to this, you need to watch Good Morning Miss Bliss and realize that. Oh. Very few of those children are you are ever going to see again. Minimal. You are going to see three of them again, and two of them you're not really going to like ever again. <laughs> like, right. that That oh, right. That kind of was it, man. It was like this, like for me, it was this, like, yeah, oh, I, I know some, like, I know some of these kids. And you're on teams. So, like, so, like you said, you know, right. it's it, 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 like your your class. Yeah, you're it's like a different school. Yeah, there's like four different yeah. schools for you. So, your like grade. you have your class when you're in elementary you're like, school, and it's like, yeah, I can yeah. know these thirty kids, and maybe have a couple of friends outside that you see at recess or whatever, and then. But you, yeah, but you got recess and you got time. Right, exactly, and that's people. it. Recess is all right? play, hundred percent. You know, like you go, yeah. And then you go to middle school, and you're like, y- you might or see lunch, them in gym, maybe, yeah. You might, yeah. <laughs> or lunch, possibly. Um, but I don't know. It's it's not. It's yeah. It's different. So there's definitely not like a crew that I hang out, and then, um, and then you get to Bayside, man, 
and they get some characters that really work. Some <laughs> fluctuate fluctuate in and out. I mean, you you swap a Jesse for a Tory and like that kind of stuff. But like really, you, you kind of hold on <laughs> to a couple of those a couple of those friends because that's that's I guess kind of the interesting thing is like ironically for for us it sounds like having a very close knit group as a class in elementary school worked having a bigger, you know, basically four times that amount as a team in, um, in middle school didn't work all that well. And, but then completely disregarding any of that and just throwing everybody into high school where you have the freedom where maybe you have this whole class, maybe you don't, maybe, but, but everybody's kind of jumbled up a lot more that's when like the groups re-solidified for me right. and for you it sounds like so Correct. middle school I is agree. just this weird like i don't know like it seems like it would just be a logical step like you had 30 kids you hung around with now you have a hundred kids that you kind of hang around with and now you have a whole grade you know a whole freshman class that you hang around with or whatever or have access to and you're like yeah i don't know these hundred kids are weird right. And it's dark and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> dude, the thing about Challenger, dude, is that there all those back hallways are just uh, mm-hmm. lockers. So right. there's no windows anywhere. I remember walking to the library, like that hallway mm-hmm. right in front of the library. Yeah. It was so dark. I was just like, I'm going to get <laughs> mugged on the way to the library. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, just like, you know, just... That's when like, I'm just I just want to get my start clutch, that I <laughs> clutching that the straps to your hold. backpack a little tighter, <laughs> just like uh, like <laughs> yeah, <sighs> You're like I'll just take it off my shoulder so yeah. I can swing it at oh somebody. My gosh, there's like a chilly to. breeze coming through here. <laughs> like what the heck? Is that a stray <laughs> dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why is why that, is that trash can on fire? Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that sixth grader got a fingerless glove exactly. over the trash can. I, right? I will say this: um, we mm, and we did go to. Uh, I did spend the uh, last or two of the years in elementary or middle school in the brand new uh, school that was way brighter, way bigger halls. Like I, again, even the paint. Yeah palette was completely different like challenger it was all like dark right. blue dark carpet brick walls and this is just like you know it's like tan and like you know taupe and like you know these like actual like you know reality mm. colors and so i'm just like Ugh. well think about where they got the name challenger like that was a it's dark true. day <laughs> and they thought it a good idea to name a middle school mm-hmm. after that, when it was just like, "No, nah, dude, you're gonna have three yeah, years of darkness." Exactly. <laughs> Enjoy. But, um, but yeah, so definitely, um, yeah. I mean, towards the end of middle school, definitely started forming the um, the high school crew, and then yeah. um, I would definitely say the biggest thing about the high school crew is like, yeah, like lunch you were just like okay we 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 established ourselves a president of the month then that person decided where we're going for lunch so we didn't sit around and debate it you just follow that person wherever they wanted to go and everything so that was like our that was our big like influence i guess is we were just like okay uh, it's your birthday this month so you get to decide every day this month where we go for lunch nobody gets to argue and that just means that we just you just you pick where we're going and whose car we're taking so we can get off campus ASAP. We got, got thirty five exactly. minutes. Let's exactly. go. So that mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah, but I mean, even you and I, like for sure, like uh, again, like the whole like clicking back in, like we didn't see each other for four years, and then yeah, day one. When it was like, you know, hey, you're back. It's like, yeah, 
all right, here's the stuff we've missed. We gotta watch Spider Man Two, and we gotta get back on track. <laughs> here's here's what's been going on. Like here's all the X Men comics that you mix and stuff. It's just like let's let's do this. So, yeah, I think that's one of the Dude, big big yeah. things about it is you just you know you got it when you slip back in, and you're just like sweet, like nothing ever happened. So, yeah, man. Man, everybody out there, you should reach out to your crew. Even, like, I mean, it might be weird depending on what your relationship is with them on Facebook, but even that elementary school crew, man, I I am friends with my enter- with still my elementary school kids, and I have not talked to them in forever. I should just be like, hit them up and just be like, hey, man, you're not way into drugs or something, are you? Because you used to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Even exactly. if they are, man. Uh, uh, they hmm. need a friend. So, yeah, man, it's interesting. Like, uh, I don't know. Crews come and go, but they don't really, like you said, like, um, if it was a really good crew, then it's, it's I don't know. If you ran into him on the street, you'd just be like, dude, what are you doing? We got mm-hmm. something to talk about. Have Have you ever yeah. had clashes, crews that didn't didn't mesh? Oh, like Jets and Sharks? No, no. not really. Not that I can think of. Uh, I mean, I had outliers that I would consider... In my broader mm-hmm. crew, that that didn't necessarily hang around with the core crew group, if right? That makes sense. No, that makes sense. Yeah, um, I mean, you got your 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 class friends, and you're like, you know, like you said, you know, you might be in band with somebody, and you you'll be chummy with you know the people around you because you have to sit there right. all the time, and blah blah blah. But like when the bell rings. You're out. You're 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 like. See you next week. Burr, I'm gone. Right. Well, I mean, even in high school, it started for me to be like I had a couple of different quote unquote crews, mm-hmm. you know, and I never had much issue mixing. Um, which it didn't happen all the time, but every now and then, I'd be like, "Dude, we're doing this. You should come." and they were like, uh, that sounds amazing. And uh, it was always a good time. So, like, uh, uh, right. I don't know. I don't know. Right now I'm thinking of the time that the times that we would go to the Dillard's parking lot and we'd play hockey in the Dillard's parking lot. Oh, under, underneath the double, the, the parking garage thing? No, we'd play on, play oh. on top because they had right. lights. So we would go, and I and that was a little bit of a melding of a crew because I had a street hockey crew, but then I invited a couple mm-hmm. other people, and I was like, "You like street hockey? I know. We've talked <laughs> about it. You need to come because we're playing a huge game on Dillard's." And it was like, "Yes, we will do it," and it was it was awesome until security came and kicked us out. <laughs> no. But it was, uh, um, but so. So yeah, so I I learned to handle a little bit of different crews as I got older in that way, and um, yeah, I don't know. I can think of, gr- like I said, I have a. I don't know. Yeah, no, not really <laughs> warring crews right. per se. How about yourself? Um, well, I was. I don't know. I like to think of myself as a likable esque person, um, and everything. Like, yeah, you 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 know how to win friends yeah. and influence people. And uh, so when I was um, leaving for Canada, heading out on the mish the for two years and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I'm also like a gatherer of people. Like I like to get people together. Like you know, throw like. A little bit right. of throw some party kind of a thing, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so right. uh, I had 
people from church, obviously, because they were, you know, support me on this endeavor. I had people from school Mm -hmm. that were, you know, eager to kind of get one last game of eight ball smash in for the last, you know, the last Mm -hmm. hall. Uh And then I had a bunch of dudes from work. Uh, like I said, working at Sam's club, um, that, that came and it, it did not go very well. No, it was mainly just because, I mean, like the, the, the church crew and the, and the school kids and school crew, you know, they all went together fine. Everybody, but the work group was a rowdy and not the nicest bunch and it was really? it was very <laughs> apparent and it was kind of like i guess more of like in my head kind of like like in a vacuum like at work like that's just you know like they're all like that and that was probably that was part of the problem is they were all like that and uh-huh. i just was like yeah i'm a fun guy that just kind of likes to talk to people and blah 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 but then when it was bad. Like I, like I established the rule, like you know, don't bring any uh, substances in my house. You know, we'll have food, whatever, blah blah blah. But they were just not the, yeah, not the most charming of individuals, and so it it got pretty dicey pretty fast. And it, it was because they 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 were at one end of the spectrum. And of course, they offended like the other uh-huh. end of the spectrum, but they even offended like the middle spectrum. <laughs> like they were just total outliers in this group, and I was just like, "Ooh, um, that was kind of dicey." That's weird, bro. When you go into a situation that you're like, "I don't know what kind of people are going to be there," let's be on our best behavior just in case, right? You know, and it just sounds like they did not go in with that oh, mentality, no. and they said, "We're going to go in exactly how we are, and if they don't like it." Screw them. And you're like, well, that's, that's, you've lost. You've I lost would almost probably. say this. They went um, a little over the top purely to get some reactions out of people and stuff like that. So that's, is, that's is, not, that's yeah, not great. That's, I don't think that's in the book <laughs> to make, make friends and influence people. I don't no. think that's in there. No. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, those people I do not talk to anymore. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they That's were funny. just they were just a rowdy, rowdy group, and it was not great. Um, but yeah, man, like it is interesting. I and I, I have no better analogy than uh, straight up. Um, Say by the bell. Say by the bell is just like a perfect, like kind of illustration of how. One character can just, you know, fluctuate through a couple of different friend cycles and things like that. And when you go to college, are you are you right. bringing everybody with you or not, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, yeah, man. But well, cool, man. I think uh, yeah, we had a pretty good yeah. crew back in the day yeah. too. Hanging out in the trash can, yeah. or for us up on the elevator. Law elevator something. I don't know what that would be called. Elevator skywalk jetway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, yeah. In high school. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even but even after that we had a pretty mm-hmm. good crew. So I mean I guess that's also a thing that you continue to kinda of do with Eight Ball Smash mm-hmm. to just kind of meld some some groups together and see how it went. And uh I I don't know. I I was not privy to the dicey Yes first one because i was gone but uh but everything afterwards i thought went fairly well yeah and that's the thing i mean eight ball smash is it that is one of my favorite things about it it is a time that crews can come together and multiple groups of people can just like hang out and everything like that and like i mean it's a it's a it's good enough time to bring your baby to you know, like, like <laughs> yeah. the, oh, that was one of my favorite, just like, oh, we're coming and we're bringing the baby. And, you know, when it's my turn, 
Like, he'll hold it, and when it's his turn, I'll hold it, and, like, we'll just pass this baby around, <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> uh, You're like, let's put you... We'll put you on the waterbed, and you just don't roll over. <laughs> just, yeah, and just don't put you close yeah. together, <laughs> so that you have time to pass the baby off without it being exactly. hairy. Um, <laughs> uh. But, uh, but yeah, and then it just goes to show if it's a true crew... Mm-hmm. They're respectful of the other friends that you yeah. have, which, you know, your, your work friends didn't seem to be a no. true crew. So, because they don't respect yeah. you and your people. True that. So, mm-hmm. anyways, true crew. True crew. Um, Put that on a shirt. So, for a shirt, the true crew. The true crew? Yeah. That should be, that should be our, our group. If we form some kind of group, it should be the true crew. Ah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. Well, should we talk about some news? Well, and not some news, but some new. A new. Z- a new each. A new per each. Sure. Uh, I really want to talk about the Do installation it. and augmentation of our new entrance. Oh, yeah. Hit me. So, uh, with this house, one of the things that we had asked the previous homeowner to do was to replace the front door because it was a, uh-huh. it was a solid wood door and it's just, it had a big split in the middle. Mm. Um, uh-huh. just, and it's, it's east facing. So it's not like southern facing where it gets sun all day long, but for whatever reason, it is just like the sun beats down on this thing in the morning. And uh-huh. the siding um, around the door was all faded and this like not great green yellow color. Um, it, it was like this dark <laughs> green, but it had faded to this like kind of yellowish color and the door was the same color and like i said yeah it was um it was split partially because the storm door just traps the heat in between the door and the storm door and just greenhouses the shiz out of this door and it just gets so hot and bleaches any decorations you put on there and it bleached the whole door all that kind of different stuff so um we're like okay well luckily we have the storm door so there's not too much cold air getting in there but there's also like right an inch gap at the bottom of this door like no threshold touching at all it's just straight up hanging there so we you get stuff blowing through underneath. No, the door? because of the storm door, we don't have that. You could just feel the cold air just kind of leaking in right oh, there. Oh, because you got the screen. Right, 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 right. right. So, um, so we're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna fix this guy up, and we're gonna replace it, and all this kind of different stuff. And so, because they didn't do it, they, they didn't. Oh, sorry. We asked for a new for door, and she said, oh, pfft, no." She did not do any of the, <laughs> any of the repairs that we asked her to. She farted. Pretty actually? much, not even replacing the broken window that she broke in the garage to and everything like that. So, um, so we took it upon ourselves to to replace this door, um, and have been looking at it for a while, kind of uh, trying to plan it out and all this different stuff, um, and. You know, doors went on sale, so we went ahead and got um, a new pre-hung door. And after okay. you and I fussed and f- finicked, how many doors? Like twelve in my mom's house. Oh, like yeah. replacing all those interior doors and the and the garage door mm. and everything like that. Uh-huh. Pre-hung is the way to go. For sure. <laughs> you get yeah. buying a slab, you were just asking for it. Oh, man. You remember? Oh, we have to tell that story later. The table saw. That was awful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, so we got this uh, We got this door. Um, and we're like, okay, well, it's going to get cold here 
pretty soon and so we want to replace this door and everything like that and so um the biggest the other weird thing about it is this this solid wood door that we had was also two inches short or two inches uh less on both the sides and the top and the bottom and it turns out that whenever they replaced this door instead of pulling out the old door and putting in a new door mm -hmm. jam and everything like a pre-hung door they just literally slapped a smaller door jam within that door jam and so the door was like an inch smaller on all sides <laughs> Door jam and set and set. Yes, exactly. It's like Russian nesting doll of door jams here. So we had to <laughs> we had to pull that whole thing out and and everything. And luckily, the rough opening it was enough to fit an actual size standard door. So, uh, dude, that's lucky. Dude. Yeah. Well, it's not lucky. It's just how the house was made. It's just <laughs> it a standard <laughs> thing. It's. Yeah, it's lucky that they just they found a door that could fit within a door. I don't even because <laughs> that's going to be the expensive one. This door only cost us a couple right. hundred bucks because it was standard, whereas a custom door would have been a thousand dollars minimum. You know, stuff like that. So right, that's yeah. Funny. So um, had some friends over to help um, put it all in and all that kind of different stuff. Uh, because yeah. they had some um, some tools and, and all this. The problem is, though, is it's getting later in the year. And so starting at 3 o'clock, we pulled the trim off, you know, and found a couple of surprises there. There was absolutely no insulation oh. <laughs> on this door jam anyway. So, you know, nice for us because right. we can just cut it out and pull it out without having to worry about any um, insulation or foam or anything. Pulled the door out and then it's like, we have to put this door in today or else we have a giant hole in the house. <laughs> you know, like this, this right. is a one day project. Like I see these people like they've taken like three weeks to replace their roof. And so they have to put this big old tarp over it every day. It just <laughs> looks terrible. Um, oh my goodness. So we're trying to get it to fit. And like, you know, it's all these little things, you know, that come up with every construction problem, or every construction plan and everything. Um, it's a standard opening, but like it's, it's actually too deep for this particular door because the, Dry, like it won't line up with the drywall on the inside and the siding on the outside. So you're going to have like half an inch, you know, on either side and all this kind uh -huh. of stuff. And so we're trying to navigate this, trying to figure out how to do it and all this kind of stuff. And it just wasn't really working. So we decided to just kind of put it in place, put a couple screws in it and just kind of say, all right, we'll finish it up later. And we ended up, you know, I shouldn't make fun of the tarp because we ended up getting a shower curtain and literally just taping a shower curtain <laughs> to the outside of the house. Um, to, cause we, you know, had a half inch gap on either side where the foam is supposed to go and, you know, put the trim on and all that kind of different stuff. Right. So then the next day, um, the missus and I, like, you know, we had, we had asked the friends over cause they, you know, would have been, you know, were a great help, but like they, you know, we're a little bit more experienced than us at uh, this kind of thing. But pretty much we were like, okay, we got to figure out how to do this ourselves. Let's, let's do it. So we ended up literally taking the whole door back out, lay it on the lawn. For like, really? and, um, I found a table saw for 20 bucks. It's not great, uh -huh. but it holds a blade steady and it has a fence that I can, you know, line up and I can cut, Set, uh -huh. I can cut some pieces of wood on it. And so, um, I ended up making extensions like, so the, the, the pre-hung door came with exterior trim, like the exterior casing. And that was, okay. that was part of our problem is once that was right up against the house, that's when the half inch on the inside of the door wasn't, you know, Stuck out. wasn't lining right. up. So 
we literally just pulled that all off, pulled all that uh, trim off. I created a half inch wide extra door jam that we then uh, attached to that, put that on, put the trim back on, then set the ha- set the door in place. So now it actually lines up with the uh, drywall on the inside and the trim on the nice. outside and everything and siliconed it, uh, primed it, did all the caulking and everything. And then we just painted over that nasty green um, with uh-huh. our one of our last siding. Yeah, the nasty green siding and everything. Um, and oh, that was an adventure trying to pick a paint color. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Like, Stuff, yeah, it's like we well, got to look at it in different lighting. You know, we got to make sure it's this and that. that. But uh, but it right. but it looks great. Like I think, it, and we'll post a picture of it and everything, the before and after. Nice. But um, but yeah, like I mean, we've had some cold days since we put it in, and like it is, we don't even have the storm door back on yet, and it is totally sealed, perfectly. Um, like insulated and it, nice. and that was the nice thing is like it gave me a chance to do it right to like put extra flashing around the outside to actually seal out the water yeah. and all that kind of different stuff and and everything nice. like that and so I feel I feel pretty accomplished on that it's it looks super nice it works really great and uh, yeah it's just a total testament of like. You just got to give yourself time, man. <laughs> like, if you slapdash it. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, you're going to have to go back to the hardware store at least three times, if not more. Oh, yeah. And everything yeah, yeah. like that. Every project. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and everything like that. But, Absolutely. But, uh, but yeah. So, the, nice. that's uh, my little adventure there. Uh, what uh, new was for you? Well, um... I've waited to talk about this on the podcast, and this is exactly the reason why. (laughs) Um, (laughs) My wife and I have been or had been in talks to have a tiny home built for us. Join in the movement. The tiny home. The. uh, yeah, we thought it was a good option for where we were at, you know, mm-hmm. financially and whatever. And, um, you know, we like the idea of living more minimalistic uh, mm-hmm. and things like that. And so we we thought we'll give it a go and see how it is. So we started in talks with this company in... Uh, in Oregon, to have a tiny house built. Uh, we started talking to them in June, I think is what it was. Okay. June of this of this year. Mm-hmm. 2020, the year of... The COVID. <laughs> uh, uh, shout out to the new 2020. Uh, <laughs> the new... T- <laughs> whatever that podcast was. Oh, yeah. Um, the, new tw- uh, the new 20s. Yeah. The new 20s, exactly. Uh, not as cool as the old 20s, nope. I will say. Um, but uh, so so in July, we sent them a down payment, and we found a bank that would uh, front us the money and whatever, mm-hmm. uh, you know, give us a loan on a tiny home, which is a new thing, but there are some banks that do do it. But it's not, uh, so can't be easy to find somebody it, like that. No, it took us a while to find a bank that actually does tiny home loans uh, for the sole purpose of buying you a tiny house. Um, so, so yeah, for, for those who don't know, usually to buy a tiny house like if you are going to finance it, it's going to fall under a personal loan. Or if your build will be RV certified, you can get an RV loan 
recreational vehicle loan for that. But again, to do either of those, a personal loan or a, 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 an RV loan, uh, they expect you to live elsewhere, mm-hmm. right? This is not your primary not your domicile. Primary rev- yeah. Right. Uh, and if you're buying a recreational vehicle, they expect you to have a lot of extra money and be paying a mortgage already and have dispendable income to do that mm-hmm. because it's it's a fun vehicle for, you know, recreation. <laughs> so... Um, so yeah, so it was it was a process and it was difficult and we started talking to the right people that got uh, uh, just kind of miraculously that got us the contact to this bank that provided this type of loan. So anyways, so we we got in talks with this company and they started building us a house. So. For those that don't know, what like what are the dimensions of a tiny home? Like what constitutes like a tiny home? Um, I mean, there's no real. Like, what are the what were the specs on your house? So ours was a pretty big, tiny house, as 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 tiny homes go. I suppose it it was. Uh, now, we wanted to build it on a trailer so we could move it and put it in different places. Ours was a 35-foot um, home by 8 foot, basically. Okay. Eight and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, wide. So it could be certified as an RV and it wasn't oversized as a... As a Traveling down the road. Trailer, yeah. So. <clears throat> so we didn't need to get the wide load permit or oversized load permit or anything like that to actually take it, which is, you know, part of what we wanted to be able to do with it was to just a moment's notice, pick up our house and go somewhere if we wanted to. You right. Know, park it in an RV park, hook up to the hookups and blah, 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 yada, yada. We live somewhere else now. <laughs> so... <clears throat> um, so, yeah, so you can get them bigger, uh, you can get them smaller, you can get them wider, um, but, uh, you know, we're a four-person family, so we needed something that was... Decent. Had a few yeah. different places where people could actually go to be by themselves in this kind of restricted space. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> we started talking with this company and, and they started building this home for us and uh, looking back now, uh, knowing what I know now, a lot of red flags. So, <clears throat> the first thing was the, um well, the first thing was that they were like, we want to build you the house that you want. We're going to give you a quote for what it's going to be with the information that you provide us. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, we don't mind if it goes over a little bit or whatever. We want to get you what you want. So <laughs> if there's a little bit of stuff over the top, then we'll, we don't want to open the loan back up and change it. We'll just eat it and we'll get you what you want. Oh my gosh, and, uh, that's first, so I was like, nice. <laughs> I was like, oh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> you know, we're not going to try to make you guys do that, but you know, uh, that's mm-hmm. that's nice. But you know, looking back now, I'm just like, they, you know, <laughs> they didn't have any anyways. idea what they were talking about. <laughs> Uh, it's just it's just indicative of oh you're not a good planner right okay because <laughs> all we have to do up front is give you all the things that we want you roll that in and do the math and then say well that would be a house that costs this much you people are not do you want to apply for that loan for this amount oh yes <laughs> and oh you get money and actually make money for when you build the house. Amazing. So, you know, it's just not a good business model, and it's not good planning. You people are not and, lined up for a yearly salary. They're right. They're just not going to make and, it. Uh, and that was really, for me, the biggest thing with these people is that they were not good planners, and they were not good communicators. So 
the, the the second red flag was that my wife did more drawing of plans than they ever did. <laughs> So we designed the house. So we sent things over of like, this is how we want it to be. We want the 35 by eight. This room here, this room here, this here, and this, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, great, lovely. We'll do those things. And they're like, okay, well, we want, you know, uh, we'll, when can we expect the blueprint or whatever? And they're like, we'll, we'll draw it up. We'll send it your way or whatever. The only thing we ever got was a 3D render that that this lady, the owner, had someone draw up who apparently, I don't know if she actually worked, the the, the girl who drew it up, I don't know if she actually worked there. <laughs> but <laughs> she, she, yeah, she, she drew, she worked up this 3D render in whatever program that she had, and it really was a worse drawing than my wife's 3D render that she did with a free web-based program online. <laughs> um, and we're like, okay, not helpful. You got to pay for um, some software, we, people. You got to get some sketch uh, pad. Well, yeah. Ultimately, at the sketch end, up. when I was just like, you, you could have saved yourself a lot of money planning for one, and for two, like anything that you would have eaten if you would have just bought, used that money to buy like proper blueprint software and print out a CAD file and mm-hmm. blah, 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 would have saved you so much headache if everything was just blueprinted out for your workers to build things correctly the first time. So, um, so that was another big thing. Um, we, throughout the build... Uh, they started actually pretty good because it was all very general and they had plans for it because, well, we drew them. Um, right. They're making a box. They're making down- a box. They're starting with a box. Right. But when it got down to the minutia and when they started getting and becoming very late uh, on their uh, estimate of how long it would take to build... They made more and more mistakes as they went along. Jeez. So, um, uh, so the biggest one, or the first really big one, was when I was out helping you and your mom, mom moving your mom. Mm-hmm. Um, they did the exterior of our house wrong. Okay. Completely wrong. Right. So... I tried to call this woman all day to say, because she basically said, look, this is, she said, this is how we're going to do the outside. And we said, no. And she said, well, this is what you have to choose from. And then like, Jeez. basically was like, we're not changing it. This is what it's going to be. Um, mm-hmm. You have this little choice to make. And I'm like, no, that's not how this works. <laughs> uh, right. Um, I tried to call this woman all day and she didn't answer the phone because basically she's scared because she made a mistake but wouldn't like own it or anything. Um, and then at that point I was ooh, I was pretty done with pretty done with them. Though we had some that evening, I'm not sure if I told you this. That evening, my wife and I on the phone because I'm in a different state than her. Um, mm-hmm. drafted this email about basically how what they're you know doing is not right and they're not treating us well as customers as, as this is our choice and all these things and basically what we got back from them at that point was like well you went to buy a house somewhere else so you should know how all how much all this stuff costs and you should know <laughs> that you have, <laughs> that you are making us pay a lot more money than our bid for you because of the things that you asked for. So you should be happy with the outside, basically. And I was like, what? Because This is not my job. Because I'm we not a messed builder. up. Yes. Yeah. Be- yeah, I talked to a couple other builders besides you, but that doesn't mean that I know that if I ask for this kind of countertop that it's going to take me over the top. 
And that mm-hmm. was another thing that they never did. When we, she said, ask for what you want. So we we're like, well, this is what we were thinking. We never heard a, oh, well, that really is going to take us over the the budget let's try to stay closer to the budget Mm -hmm. you know a hundred bucks or 200 bucks over we can do that you know but let's stay closer to the budget these maybe will be more the options that you have available to you and we would have been like oh great thank you we're gonna choose this one right but because all of our all the things we asked for were just met with oh great let's yeah that looks pretty let's do that or whatever um, and no pushback, we thought, oh, well, we're good because we're not builders and we're not doing the math nexus- necessarily to see where we are in the budget because I don't feel like that's my job. That's their, that's your job. Right. So, so they never communicated any of those things to us from the initial, from the initial, uh, Invoice, which was very bare as line items go, um, till the very end, we saw nothing about money except for the initial invoice. So there's never discussion, right? Really, in the terms of of well, this is how much this costs. And you need to stay in this cost range or whatever. There was no no money talk really, except when they wanted to say, "Well, this is more expensive than you know." Well, you you asked for something that basically is a free upgrade because we're going to eat this cost, and we're like, "Well, you didn't tell us that at the time, so how are we supposed to know?" So, anyways, so we kind of mended things after that a little bit and thought, "Okay, we can work through this." Let, let's see where you guys are at. Now, mind you, when they started this house in July, they said it would be between eight and ten weeks mm-hmm. for this house to be built. We're sitting at like almost twenty weeks at this. I was point. gonna say this is this is quite, and that's and that's the thing is, it's like you said, the fact that they. They don't have blueprints means they don't have like a list of materials and because they don't have a list of materials, they didn't order this said list of materials and because they didn't (laughs) order this said list of materials, they don't know how much that's going to cost. And so when they are invoicing it and then, oh no, we made a mistake. It's like, well, now you have to go back and you have to fix the mistake. So you have to pay for the materials that you messed up and you have to pay for the materials that you're going to put that are correct. And that's why they're like, oh, well, it's, this, it's costing us so much more than we originally invoiced. It's like, that's not my fault. If you had only done the original materials, it probably would be within budget. <laughs> or you just didn't right. give us a good budget in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, they they lowballed it for sure because they're trying to get business, but that's not how you that's not how you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, here's an example of your point. So it's a small house. We have a counter space that's maybe six feet long, probably mm-hmm. shorter than that. Mm-hmm. A counter space where with an actual counter. So we think, well, we could. I bet. We could do quartz. We go to Lowe's. We look at some things and we're like, well, this wouldn't really be that much that expensive for that square footage or whatever. You know? Right. So we're trying to be uh, cognizant of these things. But again, we don't have the total thing. We're not doing all of the math. But we're like, we're looking at this. Can we do this? And we sent this over. And she's like, sure, sure, sure. Great, great, great. Um They'd never done quartz countertops before and just said, yes, we can do it to try to, like, get us what we want, quote, unquote. But, like, they've never done it before. So they they make us low. So, I mean, this is in, in the heat of COVID, right? So supply chains are destroyed, basically, mm-hmm. at this point. Right. They can't. Part of their issue in the length, and give them the benefit of the doubt to part of this, 
is that they couldn't get the materials that they would normally be able to get in the time frames that they were normally able to get them. Um, so benefit of the doubt on that, you know, we gave them some leeway on time as that goes. Mm-hmm. So they made us change two times what kind of quartz we wanted because the quartz that we asked for from Lowe's, they couldn't get. Right. Like it was going to take, honestly, if they'd ordered it, when we asked for it, they probably could have got it by the time they were actually done with the house. But uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Uh, but uh, so so the, the second time they made us change our order is when they actually drove, I don't know, like a day's drive out, 12 hours or something, to this quartz place to pick up the quartz. They found some place that, they, that would do it, that would let them come and pick it up or whatever. Right. So... But we don't know they're going. We don't know that they're going to need us to pick something. Mm -hmm. So my wife is working. I'm eating dinner with my family. And they're like calling and bombarding our phones trying to get us. And my wife finally picked up the phone in the middle of like her lesson. She's teaching some kid piano, right? Right. They're like, what going on? They're like, we need you to pick this right now. And she's like, I can't. I'm at work. You know, you guys didn't tell us that this was something that we needed to plan to do. We we have lives. We're doing things. So they made, she's just like, you have to take care of this. Like, I'm working. So I had to, like, miss half a dinner, basically, to talk to these people. And they were so, like, upset with us that we were, we were giving them grief about doing this. And we're like, what? Jeez. You're making a switch? Anyways, so mm-hmm. they ordered the courts. They take it home, they set it up on end against something oh. out, outside, uh-huh. wind picks up, knocks the quartz over, it breaks. Smashes. Nice. They got to drive back, order more quartz, bring it back. They later installed it. And and this is this is way later after they bought it and installed it was way later a month or two when we finally got to see it there was a whole month two months almost where they didn't send us any pictures so we didn't know what the two months was. when they should have had it done in two in eight weeks right 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 and so we yeah. didn't see pictures we didn't know what progress were we're freaking out like this is what's going on so finally when we get this is after the whole debacle on the outside. We kind of mend the relationship. She gives us a walkthrough of the house. And we see that the quartz is twice as much as we asked for. Like twice as thick or twice as... Twice twice as long. Twice as long. Okay. So if you can picture, we had like maybe a six foot uh, kitchen area, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the kitchen area, we wanted like a straight table like a straight slab of wood or whatever on the wall that would fold down Mm -hmm. against the wall so we could prop it up and we could sit at it like kind of like a bar table top Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. But then kind of tuck it down to give a little bit more living space next to the kitchen. Um, This is in our original drawings. They obviously missed it, never asked us about it, whatever, she buys quartz for the whole thing to cover not just the kitchen but also the table section, which is not what we wanted. Just cutting so they're giving us six six feet, you know, like this is like a tw- of, twelve foot slab or something. And we're like, right, but I mean, like cutting out, you know, of your already tiny living space, you know, twelve to twenty square feet of house. Right. Well, we don't. Yeah, this extra six foot or whatever on the end, whatever mm-hmm. it turned out to be, which should have been a table which we could move up and down is the solid piece of quartz that like, I was like, that's going to (laughs) break. Like if we're driving that around Mm -hmm. it, because it's like a countertop, there's nothing supporting it underneath. And I'm like, that that's very 
dumb for one. They gave us grief multiple times when the relationship had soured during that, when they made their mistakes. And we were like, you guys need to communicate. And they're like, you need to stop making us buy things over the budget or whatever. We gave you all these free. Yeah. Their argument was always like, we gave you these free upgrades. You should be happy with the mess up that we made. Basically. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're like, Oh, that's not how it works. And also you griped about buying this quartz twice. But it was also more than we wanted, and, and yeah. you're angry wow. with us about it. So that's just a that's, that's an example of kind of what it was. So, so the last thing that really, I know I'm sorry this is going long, but uh, I this is long. I mean it's it's been long for you, man. Like this has <laughs> been since long. June. <laughs> A lot of months to kind of get this because I was going to wait until we got the house and when we were going to talk about it where it was going to be a happy thing. Now it's a sad thing. But right. but um, something that I think needs to be discussed. So um, what ultimately happened was um, because the planning didn't happen the right way, a couple of things compounded to the point where it wasn't going to be comfortable for us to live in this house. Now we're tall people. Me and my wife are tall people. And mm-hmm. yes, people gave us grief. Like, Oh, you're tall people living in a tiny house. How's that going to work? And we're like, well, we're going to design it so that it doesn't suck for us. It's not that <laughs> difficult. Right? right. Um, so, but because they're not good planners, a couple things compounded to the point where we were like, I don't think we can actually do that. Um, so one of the things that happened at the very beginning, we wanted over the whole top of the roof, we wanted a, a, a shallow pitch, not a very steep pitch, a mm-hmm. very, uh, right. Uh, I don't know what the, you know what I mean, but not a steep Shall- pitch of the roof. Right. Shallow pitch. Yeah. Shallow pitch. That's right. Right. Yeah. And we wanted to cross the whole thing um, because, well, we're tall people and that would help. Uh, on one side was going to be a loft that was, you know, uh, almost seven feet high so mm-hmm. that I could walk underneath it and not bump my head. Um, and that's where our kids were going to sleep. Up, So that was basically their room up in this loft. So we made them build stairs so that our kids could get up comfortably and down. One mm-hmm. thing that they talked us into at the very beginning was that you don't want like the shallow pitch all the way across. Like you're going to have this open space in the middle where your kitchen is anyways. Why not bring it down in the middle so it's not so boxy? And I don't know. We didn't really want that, but we were like, at this point, this is way early on. You know, we're like, they're the builders. They'll know what's not what looks nice and what doesn't look nice, whatever. So we're right, like, right. okay, that sounds that sounds fine. Like, it's not going to eat into the loft. It's going to be before the loft, so that's not going to impede us whatsoever. And uh, it'll be over the kitchen. It'll break it up a little, you know, a little mm-hmm. bit to give it a little variety and make it look more like a house and less, less like a loaf of bread. So we said <laughs> fine. We said fine. Right. Another thing we asked when we were designing the kitchen, we of course are designing it to the best of our abilities, but we're not gonna we're not there, and we don't know everything that they're necessarily dealing with when they are building it. So when we went to them with this information, we were like, we're not hard set on anything in the kitchen, but this is kind of the mock-up that we came up with. Will this work? And one of the things. Like- Plumbing and drainage and all that kind of different stuff. Like, well, all that yeah, kind of it's, stuff. It's, it's and, hard yeah. to it's hard to plan when you don't know exactly what the code or whatever is supposed to be. Well, yeah, and we're yeah. not builders. We're just saying, would this work? And one of the things we asked about was we had purchased a well, we had asked them to purchase this specific fridge for us, which was a smaller fridge, um, uh, smaller in height smaller in width than your normal fridge. Um, uh-huh. And we wanted, we were thinking, what if it went under the stairs? Would it fit under the stairs? And she said, yeah, 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 we can, we can make that work. And we're, and again, we were, 
we presented it in my recollection as like, we need help with this. Would this layout work? And she just mm-hmm. immediately said, yeah, 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 we'll make it work. And I was like, uh, you know, and looking back on it, I was like, that's not the answer we needed. We needed you to actually plan it out and say, actually, these are some things that you might not have thought about that we're going to have to deal with doing this, which they didn't do. And we needed them to do that. One thing that, that one factor of this was that they, they have wheel wells over the wheels on the trailer that this house is built on. Mm -hmm. Um, They engineered it to lower the trailer a little bit so that we could have more room in the house before we were over height for the code for the R- for RV style. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um which is great, but then they had to deal with this protruding wheel well situation that would come into the house, which this is again the first time they'd ever done that and they weren't prepared for this and they didn't they, make plans for these. They, so, they got that seat on the bus. So now you, you got that seat on the bus where you know, you either have to sit really close to the kid that your right. bus partner's with, or you got to put your feet up by your, you know, so your knees are up on your chest. Right. You're sitting over the wheel well. Ugh. So, so two things were impacted by this. The, the bathroom, mm-hmm. the kitchen. Well, the bathroom and the kitchen. I was like, those, that's, that's, that's two. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I can count. Um, the tub seemed to work out okay. We asked for a full size tub so we could like wash our children. You know how it works. So uh, the mm-hmm. tub they figured out just fine. The toilet they did not figure out. They they turned the orientation of the toilet so that it was wrong and so that my legs wouldn't fit oh. between the toilet and the vanity. Great. Um, but the other thing that they didn't factor in was that the the because of the wheel whale the. Uh, fridge had to be taller, which actually extended our stairs out longer than they would have been. Did uh, just a quick side note? Did we talk about the um, the bathroom that uh, my wife had at one of her apartments, where it was clearly designed with like girls in mind? Like they put extra showers in so that multiple girls could be there, and then they had a toilet room, you know. Uh-huh. But like, it was to the point where, like, when I went in there to go to the bathroom, like, I couldn't stand up straight, and I was actually like kind of straddling the toilet because, like, uh, it was designed to where to like sat there's on. no room to stand in front of the toilet because the ce- <laughs> the ceiling sloped in because right. of some duct work and the do- the wall was so close it's like you could sit on the toilet comfortably and do your business but to stand there you had to like stand like with your knees like almost on the other side of the bowl and your right. back hunched and as the weirdest thing anyway that's what it makes me feel like, where it's just like, for sure. Come on, man! <laughs> like, for sure. You gotta make sure you gotta like before you mount the toilet, you gotta stand and sit and check this out. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So that was a whole thing, but the worst thing was because of the fridge being taller, the stairs couldn't just be straight stairs up. They had to make a landing at the top of the stairs. So, which so, takes up more space. Which takes up more space, but not only that, it takes up more space at the top of the landing. So now this landing is under the more steep roof. Oh, right. The steep roof that they broke you into. So with the shallow roof, um, it, it was going to go down on the very lowest point to about three and a half feet anyways. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we'd really have to duck in there, but if we were going right on the side, but if we could get cheat in, you know, it was four feet high and somewhat. So we could get in there okay. But uh, with the steeper roof, we basically, it was like three feet at the the best. And it it wasn't... 
Three feet. Three feet, maybe at the at the mm-hmm. highest point. And that wasn't just like a quick duck and kind of get in kind of thing. It, we basically had to crawl across this landing to get into uh-huh. their room. Um, and they kind of boxed it in with the design that we had given them. They built these shelves all the way to the end of the butted up against this landing basically. So it made the landing even longer. Um, and we're like, hmm. we can't comfortably climb into that 12 times a day, which we're right. going to need to, that our kids are going to be up there. They'll be up there. They'll cry and they'll need us to come get them. They'll whatever is the situation. We got to be able to get up there and get up there quickly and yeah, it would have been a little bit tight, you know, uh, going up to four feet there, but being able to just kind of go right in, get down on your knees and be like, what's up, kid? What's your issue? But now we got to like crawl through this whole thing. So at that point, we were just like, whatever. She, this lady had... had uh, had told us so many times about how we were terrible customers and how we were swindling her out of money and all this stuff. And I was just like, gosh, we're done. So we went through this. We went through one last walkthrough. She had promised Mm -hmm. she had, this is all digital. This is all, this is all right. um, Digital walkthrough over zoom or whatever. We, we had, um, um, we had gone through a walkthrough the day before, and we were like, let's plan a walkthrough when when it's just you and us, and we can take our time and talk about stuff and look at things and whatever. So she's like, let's plan it tomorrow for after my guys go, when the, their day's over, and I'll walk through it with you, and we can talk through and look at stuff and really take our time. So we call at the, the scheduled time the next day. She takes us through the walkthrough. All the people are there. <laughs> okay. All the all her workers are in there working. And so she takes us through real quick. We see one thing that we weren't expecting, so we asked about it or whatever. But uh, we kind of feel like we can't bring anything up. Like we... We, you know, she's got us on speaker in front of all the workers and we don't want to, mm-hmm. you know, kind of bring up our, our issues, which aren't their fault. They're just building it in front of all mm-hmm. these guys. So at one point, my wife texted me because we are in different places. Like I'm up to work and she's at home while we're doing this. And so she sent me a text to say, I I don't feel like I can bring anything up. Accidentally, she had texted it to a group text with both of us in there. So this lady saw this. After after the walkthrough, she texted us back in response to that text, basically saying, I'm sorry that you guys feel that way, blah, blah, blah. She started very nice, but then when we didn't respond, she got very mean and was like, I'm bending over backwards for you. I'm doing all these things. Blah blah blah, and I'm not. I don't feel like I'm getting any respect from you, and all and this that kind of stuff. I'm. Mean, that's not necessarily the words that she said, but that was the idea of it, basically. And I was just like, no, we're done. Like, there's too many big issues in there, anyways, that it's not going to be comfortable for us to live there, without us having to go in and like rip things out and build things ourselves. Which you right. know, it's not the point of a builder. Wanted to build as close to what you asked for as you could. And when issues came up, they should say, well, this is an issue. What do you want to do? Here are our options versus, oh, it was an issue. So we decided to do this. And they're like, well, that's like you're taking my money. You're making financial decisions without me. Like that's not okay. So, right. so anyways, so we sent – we, talk, we talked to a lawyer, and he said, look, you demand from them what you want, and if they don't want to meet those things, then you 
um, demand your money back. <laughs> say yeah. Say we're done. This is whatever. So, so we we did a little research and we wrote a uh, breach of contract letter to them because their mm-hmm. initial contract, their sales agreement that they sent us with this measly invoice was just full of holes and very small and didn't really talk to most of the things that we had asked for in the invoice anyways. So, and the great, I mean, the great thing on that from your side is they wrote it, right? Right. They wrote it in it is the quote for how long it will take and how much Mm -hmm. we're going to have to pay and all this stuff. So we said, look, you're in. Yeah. The, any ambiguity, right? Yeah. Any ambiguity is, as far as I understand it, like favor to the party that did not write the contract. Oh, absolutely. So if, and since they you didn't, didn't write a good contract. say this explicitly. Right. Yeah. And since they didn't write a good track, contract with fine print that said basically if it takes longer within this amount of time or these things, then the contract is still valid or whatever. They don't do any of those things. So it was right. it was just like this is what it is and this is how long it will take. That's basically what they wrote. And we're like, well, you have already told us that it costs more, so you're in breach of contract with that. And you've already, obviously, it's taken way longer, so you're in breach of contract with that. So we wrote this up, and we're like, you're in breach of contract, so we want these things fixed, which were the the roof and or the stairs to negate the whole crawling thing. Mm-hmm. The bathroom to fix the toilet orientation. The counter, because we didn't want all that counter and a table instead. And the exterior, because you messed our exterior up. It was just those four things, but two of them were pretty big, right? Um, and we were like, we want these things. And if you're unwilling to do that, then we want our down payment back and our agreement canceled, basically. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, apparently uh, they didn't, they thought that was great. So they sent us our money. Back. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, unbeknownst to me, because it took forever and they didn't say anything, which she should have just said something, but she sent us our money back the next day after we sent that to her. She mailed our mailed us a check the very next day. Mm-hmm. So she was obviously done as well, but I don't I don't think that I don't know. As a business person, I don't think she should have been there. She anyways. So it's neither here nor there, as that goes. This has been very long. I'm so sorry. Anyways, um, so that was the whole thing. It's been a whole thing, and uh, the money came back, and the check did not bounce, so that's good, and we're still homeless. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, um, we'll we'll have to get back to that when you guys do find something that yeah. is suitable and to your liking, you know, that kind of different stuff. Man, I heard some horror stories from builders and stuff like that, but that definitely takes the cake. So, Oh, yeah. There's a uh, lot more yeah. I could have gone into. And, again, sorry that I didn't yeah. cut out more than that. But if you're still here, thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening and sticking with us. Maybe we should do this at the top of the episode for people that just – don't leave or maybe we don't want to thank them if they don't make it all the way right. so <laughs> um, but uh yeah if uh, if you guys got your own uh horror stories or anything like that uh, check out uh our twitter tag and brando um gmail as well tag and brando at gmail.com as um yeah and we'll post pictures of the door and the you know maybe some of the original plans for <laughs> this tiny home on uh, on our Instagram yep. tag and Brando um, and that is uh, that's all for this week so we will check back with you later thanks guys thanks everybody bye <laughs>